In this video, we will be explaining the differences between absorption costing and variable costing. In earlier chapters, we classified both variable and fixed manufacturing cost as product cost. In job order costing, for example, a job is assigned the cost of direct materials, direct labor, and both variable and fixed manufacturing overhead. This costing approach is referred to as full or absorption costing. It is so named because all the manufacturing costs are charged to or absorbed by the product. Absorption costing is the approach used for external reporting under generally accepted accounting principles. An alternative approach is to use variable costing. Under variable costing, only direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead costs are considered product cost. Companies recognized fixed manufacturing overhead cost as a period cost and expense it when incurred. The difference between absorption and variable costing is the treatment of fixed manufacturing overhead. Under absorption costing, we're going to include it as part of the product, whereas under variable costing, we're going to treat it as a period cost and expense it when incurred. Let's review. Under variable costing, direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead will be considered part of our product cost. Our period cost will include fixed manufacturing overhead, as well as both variable and fixed selling and administrative expenses. Under absorption costing, direct materials, direct labor, and both variable and fixed manufacturing overhead will be considered part of our product cost. Our variable and our fixed selling and administrative expenses will be treated as a period cost. Again, the only difference between these two methods is the treatment of fixed manufacturing overhead. Under both absorption and variable costing, selling and administrative expenses are period cost. Companies may not use variable costing for external financial reporting purposes because GAAP requires the fixed manufacturing overhead be accounted for as a product cost. To illustrate absorption and variable costing, we're going to use Premium Products Corporation, and they manufacture a polyurethane sealant called Fix-It. Relevant data for Fix-It for January 2017, the first month of production, is provided on this slide. We have a selling price of $20, we produced 30,000 units, we sold 20,000 units, our beginning inventory is zero. Our variable cost, manufacturing is nine, selling and administrative is two. Our fixed cost, we have manufacturing overhead of 120,000 and selling and administrative expenses of 15. All right, let's take a look at our product cost. Under absorption costing, we're going to include direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, as well as fixed manufacturing overhead. Right, when it comes to the fixed manufacturing overhead calculation, I want you to take the fixed manufacturing overhead, again, $120,000, and I want you to divide by the number of units that were produced. And you come up with a $4 is our fixed manufacturing overhead cost. Under the variable costing, right, I want you to include only your variable manufacturing cost, direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. The manufacturing cost per unit is $4 higher for absorption costing. This occurs because the fixed manufacturing overhead costs are a product cost under absorption, whereas under variable costing, we treat it as a period cost. Based on this data, each unit sold and each unit remaining in inventory will be costed under absorption costing at $13, but under variable costing at $9. All right, let's take a look at an income statement using absorption costing. All right, our first line is our sales, and again, we sold 20,000 units, so I want you to multiply that by the selling price of $20 to arrive at $400,000. All right, the next um, line item is our cost of goods sold calculations. 
we had we started our period with um, zero inventory. We manufactured 30,000 units. Our unit cost is $13. So our cost of goods manufactured as well as available for sale is $390,000. We manufactured 30,000 units. We have, we sold 20,000 units, which means we have an inventory of 10,000 units. Again, we're going to multiply that by $13, so that our ending inventory is valued at 130, 130,000. If we subtract that from what we have available to sell, our cost of goods sold is $260,000. You can also arrive at that cost of goods sold of $260,000 by taking 20,000 units, multiplying that by our product cost of $13. If you subtract your cost of goods sold from your sales of $400,000, you arrive at gross profit of $140,000. And from there, we're going to subtract both our variable and our fixed selling and administrative expenses to arrive at net income of $85,000. All right, let's take a look at an income statement using variable costing. Again, at first line item, our sales is going to be the 20,000 units times $20 or $400,000. Let's take a look at our cost of goods sold calculations because this is where you're going to find a difference. All right, again, we started the period with zero dollars in inventory. Our variable cost of goods manufactured is going to be our 30,000 units, but we're going to multiply this by $9. All right, that gives us what we have available to sell. If we subtract our inventory, again, we're going to take 10,000 units, but we're going to multiply that by our variable cost of $9, get $90,000. So our variable cost of goods sold is $180,000. We're going to add our variable selling and administrative expenses of 40 to arrive at total variable cost of $220,000. If we subtract our variable cost from our sales, we arrive at a contribution margin of 180,000. And from there, we're going to subtract both our fixed manufacturing overhead and selling and administrative expenses to arrive at net income of $45,000. All right, let's take a look at the net income effects. Under absorption costing, our income was 85,000, whereas under variable costing, our net income was 45,000 we have a difference of $40,000. There is one primary difference between variable and absorption costing. Under variable costing, companies charge the fixed manufacturing overhead as an expense in the current period. Fixed manufacturing overhead cost of the current period, therefore, are not deferred to future periods through the ending inventory. As a result, absorption costing will show a higher net income number than variable costing whenever the units produced exceed units sold. As I just stated, absorption costing will show a higher net income number than variable costing whenever the units produced exceed units sold. There's a $40,000 difference in ending inventories. Absorption costing, under absorption costing, $40,000 of the fixed overhead cost has been deferred to a future period as part of the inventory. In contrast, under variable costing, all fixed manufacturing costs are expensed in the current period. When units produced and units sold are the same, net income will be equal under the two costing approaches. In this case, there is no increase in ending inventory. So fixed overhead costs of the current period are not deferred to future periods through the ending inventory. When units produced exceed units sold, income under absorption costing is higher. When units produced are less than units sold, income under absorption costing is lower. When it comes to this learning objective, I would like you to be ready for a multiple choice question that's testing you on your ability to understand the difference between absorption and variable costing. So if you see a question that asks you fixed manufacturing overhead cost are recognized as, again, I hope you'll select product cost under absorption costing. This problem is very similar to one of your homework problems, and you will find the solutions in the next slide.